Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's. Glad to have you in worship today. In your worship bulletin, your uh, back of your uh, final page, you'll find the parish announcements and, and all the wonderful things that are happening uh, in this church. Today's going to be exciting all the way around, and it's already been wonderful with our continuation of uh, the very good education program on Islam. If you haven't been aware of that, we've had a couple of classes, but we'd love to have you for the last three. That's at 9 a.m. on Sundays up in the parish hall. Um, and then later on today, we're going to gather at 3.30 out in the garden for um, the blessing of the animals. And so if you have a pet that you'd like to bring, um, we would love to, 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 to bless that pet. This is in honor of St. Francis of Assisi's feast day, which was the 4th. And of course, uh, St. Francis taught us this love and, and, and uh, joy in creation. And so uh, God has put us, as we're going to hear today, um, in charge of God's good creation and um, asked us to be a blessing to it. And so one of the ways we, we live this out is not only caring for our own pets, but getting them together and, and uh, saying that God has plans for all of the world, including uh, even the creatures in our care. So that's at 3.30 today. Then if you're so inclined, you're, you're welcome to stay around. We're going to have the gathering tonight outside. And um, even if you don't come to that, we invite you back for Sunday suppers because we're going to have a cookout outside. And, and hopefully the weather's just going to be fine for that, and, and we would love to have you. Dinner's going to be somewhere around 6, so, so please come and join us this evening. A new ministry that started that's really exciting um, this fall is something called Women at the Well. It was devised by a, a group of women who went on the women's retreat and they decided that they wanted to continue not only gathering and do something uh, about being together more often, but also to do something good. And so they are meeting this upcoming Thursday. It's a chance just to get to know um, each other better. It's here at the church and they will take an offering uh, kind of instead of going out, it's whatever they would spend on a dinner, and they put the money together and go do something uh, good for the benefit of women and children in need in our area. So that's this Thursday. There is all kinds of other wonderful things to be a part of, and so I do hope that you'll go through um, the parish announcement section and look at that, and more importantly, join us in the good things that are happening here at St. John's. I'm so glad you're here today. Let us worship God.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, o ocean depth of happy rest. You may be seated. In the creation narrative that Genesis paints for us, there is this common refrain that that accompanies each stage of creation. And it is this, it is good. Actually, that's way too flat a translation from the original Hebrew. Uh, the Hebrew is exuberant. It, it, it's like a big exclamation point. It is very good and it's repetitive. And it says, good, good, it's very, very good. It's doxology, it's joy in the wholeness of what God has intended for the world to be. And yet when you move from the first chapter to the second, this refrain of it is good all of a sudden stops. And we just heard it if we were listening to the Genesis lesson. God looks at the Adam, by the way, it's not just some dude named Adam. The Adam means the human. At this point, he encompasses all of humanity. In this way, he's every man and every woman. And God looks at the Adam alone, and the refrain abruptly ends and changes to, it is not good that the human is alone. And so God, in order to bring wholeness to his good creation, gives the Adam a partner, it gives Adam Eve. And from there springs, of course, the human family. It is not good that the Adam, the human, is alone. We live in a, in a time where we couldn't be more connected. I mean, somebody can get a hold of me for good and oftentimes for bad very, very quickly, and I'm sure you too. 
I mean, I've gone as far as buying an Apple Watch, meaning that somebody, which oftentimes happens, it's usually my heathen brother-in-law, but will text me right in the middle of even a sermon. I'm getting messages as I'm delivering a message. And yet, in this day and age, as you well know, people feel amazingly isolated from each other, distant from one another, The mental health crisis in America is going through the roof. There are studies that are out there that I pay attention to as a father that says that there is a direct correlation between when our children and us, by the way, get active on social media and are given these, you know, uh, smartphones, that their mental health starts to deteriorate that they all of a sudden, I guess, by judging them off against somebody's, you know, the, the one picture that they took out of all of the, the thousand selfies that they had to get the one good one, they think that they don't add up. And somehow, this has affected our ability to be citizens with one another. In our politics, we're atomized. And we're not just people who disagree over ideological lines or can even have a good argument anymore. No, we want to destroy each other. The other person is my enemy. And we have retreated into information bubbles that only reaffirm our own worldviews. And we don't have common spaces. The Adam is alone. And it is not good. I want you to notice that you are sitting in one of the last spaces in America that actually forces us to deal with each other. The church in America, of course, is on the decline. It's slipping off of people's consciousness of something that they think is important or vital to their life. And, And I I'm a partisan here, but I don't think it's a coincidence that with all of these institutions devolving, being given up on, not being taken care of, people not thinking that they really need the discipline of community life, where we have to interact and deal with one another, that at the exact same time, we feel more isolated, more alone, and we lack the gentleness and kindness and, and just decency that comes when you're forced to deal with each other. It's not good for the human to be alone. In the gospel story, Jesus is talking about divorce, and, and, and certainly for those families out there who've who've been touched by divorce, as my own family has. These words sound harsh and and, and hard and and very much not like what we would expect from the graciousness that we usually hear from Jesus. But I actually think it has a huge amount to say to us today. You have to understand divorce back then. There's a hint in it with the very question. So how did the question start? by Pharisees going to test Jesus. So there's a clue right there that this is about, not about really divorce and the people involved in that. This is a theological fight, a theological test. And the question is, is it okay for a man to divorce his spouse, his wife? Now right there is a big old hint from that time and age of what is being dealt with when you deal with divorce. It wouldn't have made any sense at all if they said, is it okay for a wife to divorce her husband? Because that was not allowed. But a man could divorce his wife without cause, for no reason, and without a social safety net in that culture. She was, you know, absolutely... um, left behind in society. Her parental rights were non-existent. She didn't necessarily have to be taken care of, and so she could be placed into tremendous poverty. But she's not being thought about by anyone in this equation except Jesus. 
And so Jesus takes what to our modern ear sounds like a harsh stand, but it's a harsh stand for justice for her so that you can't just put her aside. But let's back up to the original intent of the conversation to begin with because it was a theological fight, a theological test. And it's precisely these sorts of of fights, whether they be theological or ideological or political in our day and age, that we have fights that don't even care about the people's lives that we're fighting about, that is a stain on our humanity. In fact, it dehumanizes us. It's inhumane. It takes away and strips away at the wholeness and goodness that God intends for us. And yet, again, when you look at our society, you, you look at the way that we, that we do our ideological and political fights anymore. We don't care about the people being hurt by this. All we care about is winning. And very much, when that's happening in Jesus' day, he steps back and says no to that way of engaging one another. And then, in this weird twist, he takes children and he blesses them. And, and what's that about? Well, it's about seeing who's oftentimes in that world left behind, seeing who's not being seen, seeing people as vital and important even when the world doesn't think of them in that way. And my friends, I want to suggest to you that not only is the place that you're sitting a place that allows for the Adam not to be alone anymore, for community to happen, but it's also one of those last places in our society that at our best we're able to talk with each other in disagreement. You likely are sharing a pew with somebody who you couldn't imagine why they would dare vote the way that they did or think how they think. And yet here we are one with another in this place trying to say, yes, there are ideological differences in our world. Yes, there are things that that have to be dealt with. And, And sometimes there's gonna be great disagreement, but what we cannot lose sight of is each other, is humanity. We have to learn how to be human and know that we have need of each other to be whole. I have, because stewardship season is upon us, been thinking and writing a lot over the last few weeks about what it means to be a steward. Now, when we say this in the church, it's stewardship season, everybody goes, okay, well, that's a great day to miss church. Um, you know, some Sundays I don't need to do that because what they're trying to do is make a budget. And of course, you know, there's no way of getting around that. It's true. We have to make a budget. The light company uh, likes us to pay with something other than prayers. So um, all of that is necessary. And yet what really stewardship should be about, and I've been thinking for my own life, is what does it mean for me to be a steward of those vital things in my life. What what does it mean to be a steward as a father and a husband, a steward of the relationships that God has given my life? What does it mean to be a steward as a clergy person who who has the responsibility of, of, of holding all of this together? You know, the Speaking of iPhones and smartphones, did you know your iPhone just had an update and and there's a new thing on it called screen time? And what it's going to do is tell all of us how much we're on our screens and what we're doing while on our screens. And this is horrifying to me. I bet if you think about it, it should be to you. Because what it's going to do, probably for a lot of us, is indict us as not great stewards of our time. And if you were to have this sort of screen time for our society right now, 
about what our society spends its time and its energy and its resources on, I think it likewise would be devastating. Because somehow we've slipped into some way of acting where we're, we're majoring on the minors and we're monitoring on the majors. In fact, we're not being good stewards of the majors. And what I want to invite you to during this stewardship season is to be reflective on all the callings of your life, the things in your life over which God has called you to be a steward, your relationships, what makes your creation and your portion of it good and whole and right. In the next chapter of Genesis, there's that portion that's commonly called the fall. It comes about because of not listening to the ways of God, and its consequences continue to this day. In essence, each and every one of us stand there and grab the fruit and eat of it in our own way. And think about what happens when the fruit is eaten. The man and the woman want to hide themselves. They feel shame about who they are. They hide themselves as well from God. They feel alienation from God. They turn on one another. They're alienated in their relationships. And the consequences of it, we're told that creation isn't going to be this good, hospitable place for them anymore. They're alienated from a good creation. And even one of the great joys of life, which is having children, that there's going to be pain involved in that. And so they're alienated generationally. And all the ways that this good world can become undone, it is happening for them. And yet, you know, although Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a big fall and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again, well, guess what? Jesus can. And so Jesus came, as Paul said, as a new Adam, a second Adam. And in his own life and ministry, he is overcoming all of those ways of being alienated. And so people who are alienated from their good sense, he exercises that out of them and restores them fully. Those who are alienated across all kinds of lines, even in his own group of disciples, the, 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 the zealots fighting Rome and the tax collectors taking taxes for Rome, he puts them together and overcomes the alienation of strife and division. The alienation from God, he is restoring people to God's community over and over and over again. And as he calms the seas, he overcomes the alienation from a good creation. As he welcomes the children, he overcomes the generational alienation that plagues us as well. My friends, this community follows in Jesus' healing ways. We have the capacity for offering these same gifts of healing and wholeness to the world. But I will tell you, we must not take it for granted. We must be good stewards of what God has given us here as well at St. John's. And so I do ask you to make a pledge to this church. I ask you to pledge yourself in all the ways that you can pledge yourself to the good work that is done here. Because, as we saw this weekend, on Friday night, the beauty of music was presented here. Yesterday, in the ordinations, when, when servants, these young, I mean, not, not, they weren't young, uh, but these men and women who gave their lives in service to the diaconate, in other words, they're never going to get paid for being ordained to the deacons in our church, they're just going to give that gift to the world. And they did it here yesterday. And then on 2 p.m., I did a funeral for somebody that died tragically and dealt with the suffering family that was here. This is just a snapshot of a weekend that happens in this church. 
we can look at the world and say, it is not good. Adam is isolated and alone. But if we're stewards of those communities of wholeness, and we pledge ourselves to making sure that they're there for the future generations, I assure you that doxology will come again and a restored heaven and earth is possible even through the likes of Jesus working through us. Be faithful. Be stewards of your life. Amen. Let us respond with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Let us pray for the church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for St. John's Episcopal Church, Bedford, Virginia, where as our bishop is with him. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Remembering especially those named on our parish prayer list. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give, <clears throat> give to the departed eternal rest, especially Sarah Elizabeth Hickam Lowen, those we remember on the anniversaries of their deaths as named on our parish prayer list, those who have died in service to their country, and all those who have perished in war-torn areas of the world. <clears throat> we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Gracious God, we pray for the repose of the soul of Pat Green. Please welcome him into your loving arms and help us to be caretakers of his family. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. 
where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Morning. It's wonderful to have you all here with us at St. John's. One of the ways in which we share in community together is by sharing the holy uh, food and drink of Christ at the communion table, where all Christians, no matter what part of the Christian tradition you might come from, um, are welcome to take communion here at St. John's um, and encouraged to do so. If you prefer to have a blessing instead of communion, um, if you cross your arms over your chest, that lets us know that that is your preference. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your son, to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our
These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. serve the Lord.